Hey everybody, I'm sorry. We're talking about how do you deal with your single season? <laughs> Being single. Um waiting for my daughter to come back on. Waiting for everybody to come back on. Hey Albert. Hey Gina. Waiting for my daughter to come back on and uh, we're going to proceed. We're talking about different questions that many people are having concerning um, being single, you know, and their walk in Christ. How you doing? What's up, Tyrone? You know, we're in the season right now that, you know, if we as the body of Christ don't help one another, Amen. You're going to find, you, we're going to find a lot of people going to be falling off because nobody's paying attention. You know, nobody's really addressing the main issues that a lot of, a lot of us are all are dealing with, you know. Hey, Devon. Hey, Albert. Praise him. Yeah, man. Come on to church. Devil is busy. What's up, son? Fred! Yeah, I'm waiting for my daughter to come on and see where she's at. You there, dear? Yes, I'm here. Can y'all hear both of us? What's up, Shondaya, daughter? <laughs> hey, sis. What's up, Yvette? For those of you who don't know, I'm in my studio right now. <laughs> What's up, Kimmy? Oh, boy, I don't, I don't think this thing is charging, though. The devil's been fighting. In this broadcast for come on let's go give me the next <laughs> question i think only got about 10 more minutes left okay um how do i know my calling with god i'm sorry <clears throat> how do i know my calling with god Well, let's, let's just take, for instance, you know, let's take the, uh, the statement by, the, by which it's being spoken, okay? How do I know my calling, okay? Because ultimately, there's going to be a call, right? Your spirit knows the call. Your, your soul knows the call. And when God begins to call you, he'll tell you what he's calling you into. See, God God doesn't always call you like um, when when God called me into being a pastor. He didn't say, I, I'm calling you to be a pastor. He didn't say that. <laughs> See, uh, that's where people get it mixed up. God is just calling you to a yes. Mm, boy, that's, I'm telling you, I'm telling you. <laughs> like shouting right now. See, a lot of people are looking for God. Do you want me to be an apostle? Are you calling me to be the evangelist? No, He's calling <laughs> you to a yes. Once you get to the yes, then you can get to the the assignment that He has on your life. And guess what? The assignment that He has on your life, I guarantee you, you have already been doing it. Okay, and then most times it is up to the, the leadership that you're with to identify what that calling is on your life. Okay, because sometimes you really won't know it. You know, you'll be walking as an evangelist and you're doing evangelistic work, but you don't know it because you're not educated in the system of what you're not educated in the kingdom of God as to what an evangelist is supposed to do. This is the reason why you don't know. You were called to be an evangelist. Why? Because that's what you've been doing. <laughs> Hello, somebody. 
God is calling you to a yes. Stop worrying about whether he calling you to be a pastor. Forget all of that. When I came to be becoming a minister, I never asked to be a pastor. I started working out with the young people, just doing um, uh, the, the choir, just helping them with the choir. And next thing I know, um, my dad comes to me and says, you know, um, God told me to anoint you as a pastor, the youth pastor. And I'm saying to myself, he did? <sighs> the reality is he I was already doing it. See, they said they can't hear me now. The audio went out. I'm going to figure out another I way because I, once we get this the, the, the thing working, um, mm -hmm. can y'all hear me? Yo, what's up, Travis? I ain't seen you in a while, son. What up? <laughs> oh, Timmy good. said Timmy? it's fine. All right. So, so when when God calls you, He's calling you to a yes. When God began to call me, I had no idea, you know, of what I was getting ready to do. But once I said yes. It, once I said yes, my mind and my spirit now was open to hearing what God was directing me to do. Okay? So a lot of times people think that a calling is, is, is am I being called to be a pastor? Am I being called to be an evangelist? Was I being called to be a minister? We are all called to be ministers. Mm -hmm. We're all called to be ministers. We are all, we a minister is just a servant. Okay? The giftings and the different other uh, uh, appointments that God may have for you, or you may be a teacher, you may have a teacher's anointed. You may have a person, an, an anointed on your life to, to be a, a, an apostle, an administrator, or whatever the case may be. All of that other stuff, those are gifts. The Bible says that Jesus gave us so that we might edify the, the people of God, that, that the people of God may be um, edified, okay? And they may be strengthened and, and they may be fortified so that they won't be uh, uh, tossed and turned, tossed in, uh, to and fro concerning their walk in Christ. And this is why you need different, you need each one of those gifts to be in operation in the ministry in order for that ministry to be fully functional. You know, they got a lot of people, you know, they, they see, uh, the pastor sees that there's a young person in the church that has the gift of uh, the prophetic gift in their ministry, uh, uh, ministry, and they won't release them because they're jealous. The devil is a liar. All you're doing is, 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 uh, killing your ministry. And so now you're wondering why your church is not growing the way it's supposed to be growing. It's because your ministry is not fully operating under the five-fold ministry. But go ahead. Let's go to the next thing. <laughs> What's up, doctor? <laughs> How can I integrate prayer into my life more? How to integrate prayer into your life more? Well, the first thing is, is, to, is to realize the importance of prayer. If you don't have a desire and you don't realize that, prayer is is important and that is important in to it's important for your life in order for you to have a healthy uh walk in Christ a lot of times we don't realize the the reason why we're feeling unbalanced in our life is because we're not giving ourselves a balanced diet you know sometimes we have a we have a tendency to go hard with the reading and we read and read and read it but you ain't praying and this is the same thing I said to you. You know, you have to pray that God will give you the impartation of his revelation even when you're reading his word. Or you'll just be reading a miss. It's just information. I don't want information. I want a revelation. Hello. <laughs> if, you, if you realize the importance of prayer and you start, you just lay. See, praying is not always talking either. You know, a lot of people, they just want to talk too much. They just talk too much. Shut up. Hello. And let God talk. Sometimes you just got to lay before God and just listen. And as you're listening, God will give you 
the revelation that you need concerning your life. It's not you always, oh God, Lord, this situation has got me, this lady on my job, she keep messing with me, Lord. God said, just be quiet. I'm going to tell you how to deal with her. I'm going to show you exactly why she's doing what she's doing. I'm going to show you what kind of spirit is coming from her. So let me speak to you. Speak to me, Lord. Right? Most people mm -hmm. don't want God to speak because they're too busy trying to tell God what they do, what they're going through. You don't think God know what you're going through? You don't think he know what you're struggling with? So my thing is, yo, God, can you please give me some kingdom information? I need some insight. You know, it's crazy because, you know, I'm a producer, songwriter, and all that good stuff, right? And um, I remember in my beginning of my career, when my career really shot off, it was really because I sought the Lord concerning my career. But I found myself, and I don't want to even go into that part of the story, but I found myself one day in uh, job records with the president of the company. And when I was in that office with him, I didn't know why he was calling me to his office. But he called me to his office because he wanted to figure out, what are you thinking when you're creating your songs? Like, how is your songs coming out the way they come out, right? And I was thinking to myself, well, God, do I tell him the truth? Right? Because I'm in the office with, with the president of the company. And I had to tell him, before I start creating, I start praying. He said, what do you mean? I pray and ask God, what is it? Show me, God. Give me insight. Boy, I got, I got dibs. Not just because of the name. Watch this. I got dibs because I pray. <laughs> you see, because you find out what's going on in another person's life just by praying to God, seeking him for the answers, rather than trying to go, I wonder what she's going through. I wonder what he's going through. God will show me, when he showed me exactly what to write for Aaliyah when I wrote Aaliyah's song. I prayed and asked God, I said, God, I don't know what to write for this young girl. She's 16 years old. I'm 30. And he showed me what she was dealing with in her life. And I wrote a song concerning her situation. And guess what? She loved it. Can you, can you guess why? Because it came from God. And because it came from God, I had an inside understanding of what was going on. And I believe that most people don't understand when you pray to God, you're not just praying to God just to give him your issues. But you're praying to God because you have access to information that no one else has access to. Oh, I feel the Holy Ghost up in this place. I'm trying <laughs> to tell you. Listen, I challenge you. I challenge you to go to God in prayer. Ask him for the answers to your issues and your situations. Ask him, God bless you, Pastor uh, Jason. I ask God for the answers to your issues and the things that you're dealing with. I guarantee you, if you shut your mouth and listen, because we don't, we have a hard time listening. You know, we'll go quickly into speaking in tongues. Da, 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 and you'll speak in tongues right past the word. I'm just trying to tell you. We have a hard time listening. If we would learn to listen as believers, we would get direction. And the reality is, is that most people in the kingdom of God are blind to the revelation of God and the mind of God because they won't listen. They all they, they talk too much. They're talking too much. Shut your mouth and listen. Let God speak to you. Do you know the greatest songs that I've ever written was in silence? I didn't say a word. God was just speaking. And as he was speaking, he I just began to write. I didn't even say anything. I just began to write what he was saying to my spirit. And so you got to understand the greatest information that you could ever accumulate is from God. Not from your ideas, not from your skills or how you know how to do certain things. We all know how to do certain things. A, a, a dummy can learn how to write. Right? 
A person that don't that don't know how to read can learn how to read. Come on. But the reality is, is to get potent information, potent revelation from God can only be done when you when you when you access God. When you when you access God, then you got to be willing to shut your mouth and know that you're in a place where only God can really manifest glory. He's the only one that can bring forth revelation. So if you keep talking, God will be giving you the revelation. He said, all I want you to do is lift your right hand. If you can't hear it, lift your right hand. If you lift your right hand now, the word, the, the word of God will heal you right now. And you're like, yeah, da, da, hallelujah. God said, just lift your right hand. And you da, da, da. you still, come on. We need to learn how to listen and hear God. God is waiting for us to follow instructions. Do you know that even when he told when he told Joshua, he said, be of good courage. He wasn't telling him to be courageous and to get out there and start fighting. He was telling him, listen, don't you allow anything to deter you from being obedient to me. Point blank. If you do not follow my instructions, then you will find that you will be out there by yourself. So I had to learn how to just listen to God. When you read your word, you read the word with the understanding and an anticipation that God is getting ready to give you revelation. It's just that simple. You Don't read your word thinking, oh, well, I'm going to find out the answer in this scripture. Yeah, oh, yeah, that's, see, the Lord just sent me, no, the Lord sent you to that scripture so that you can read it so he can give you impartation. And he wants to give you revelation, so now you got to shut your mouth and then wait. You wait on God. God will then give you the, the information, the revelation that he wants to give you, and then he'll give you instructions on how to handle it because you don't know how to handle kingdom, it's kingdom stuff. You don't know what to do with it. Kingdom glory is, is laid in your lap. What are you going to do with it? You don't know what to do with kingdom glory unless God tell you how to handle kingdom glory. I would never have known how to deal with my anointing, the anointing that's on my life by myself. God had to show me even how to be around other people because I was anointed. Because you get around some people, they'll get jealous of you because of your anointing. So you got to learn how to be humble. You got to learn when you know, because let me tell you something. I knew I was anointed and I know I'm anointed, right? But I know that, th that this anointing came from God. The glory came from God. But because of man's, the flesh of man, man will look at you and become envy. And they become jealous of the anointing that's on your life. And if you don't handle that anointing properly, that person will now envy you. And really want to kill you. Why do you think Saul wanted to kill David? Come on, people. He didn't want to kill David because he didn't like David. He loved David. But guess what? He saw that anointing on his life. And he was like, whoa, 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 whoa. You messing with my territory. You messing with the stuff that's messing with me. And so David just removed himself. And then what, this is so beautiful. Because David turns around and says, dude, I could have I could have took you out. Right? So even after David showing the love that he did show towards Saul, right? Saul still came coming after him. Right? But Saul ended up dying on his own sword. Understand people, you don't have to you don't have to do nothing but pray to God and let the anointing that is on your life manifest itself. God will make room for you. He will open doors for you. He'll take you in places that you can't get on your own. You can't do it by yourself. Because when you have anointing on your life, it is very important that people are never confused as to whether it's you or God. That should be your first testimony. It is not me. To God be all the glory. Because there are places that you were in, right? The places that I was in. Yeah. And I know I couldn't get myself out of myself. I know that I would be dead today had it been left up to me. You know? You got to understand, get into your place with God that you need to be. And stay there. Focus on God. 
Make him the focus point to everything that you do. Is it going to be easy? No, it's not easy. Nothing that you're going to do that is going to be beneficial to your walk with Christ is going to be easy. It's not going to be easy. But you put on the whole armor of God so that you'll be able to stand against the wiles of the enemy. The reality is, is that most people are defenseless. They don't have no armor on. They don't have the shield of faith. They don't have the preparation of the God. They don't have none of that stuff on. And they're trying to operate in the kingdom realm. Unprotected. No armor. Get your armor. For the word of God is sharper than any two-edged sword. You need to understand that it's supposed to hurt when you hear the word. Because it's cutting you. Is getting rid of those, those things that is in your life, okay, that need to be surgically removed. Some things God got to do, a, 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 he puts you to sleep. That's why when people fall in my church, I tell them, don't try to hold them up, let them go. Because God is trying to do an operation. Some people got to let, I, I got my deliverance on the floor. I don't know about nobody else. I never hardly, you, you don't really see most people getting their deliverance standing up. Unless you're doing some new technology or uh, tube action where the person is, is, is upright. Or you getting your tube checked. The reality is <laughs> an operation must be done while you're laid out. And people get up too quick. You go to church because you're scared. That anointing start falling on you. As soon as you start running that one tear, you're ready to run out of the church. The devil is a liar. The devil just trying to keep you from your deliverance. The devil trying to keep you from your, he, he's trying to keep you from getting your breakthrough. And so what he do? He start talking to you, getting into your psyche. Oh yeah, you know, you know, you know, you still got some stuff to do at home. What do you got to do at home? You ain't doing nothing. You on Facebook? You chit chatting? Right? Nothing. And then wonder why when the conversations that you, the simple conversations that you're having with individuals is over. You're depressed. Why? Because it wasn't edifying to you. If you spend, I mean, think about how much hours you spend on the phone talking nonsense versus the hours that you spend devoting with God. I guarantee you, if you, if you go and you check how many hours you spend either on the phone or just kind of casually doing nothing, and then you spend the amount of hours that you actually take out to serve God, to do something um, that is edifying to your soul. I guarantee you, you'll have a big list of the things you're doing and you'll have a small list of the time that you're spending with God. So let me ask you a question. How much are you expecting your God, your, the God, your spirit and your soul to be fortified if you're not feeding it? if you're not taking time out with it, if you're not allowing God to nurture it, how much? You just can't. So you have to devote yourself to God. You have to make, you have to, you have to, and I would say even, I would go as far as to say, you have to force yourself. Sometimes you got to tell yourself and you command your hands. My hands will bless the Lord. My voice will bless the Lord. My heart will bless the Lord. How you doing, Sheree? You know, you have to tell yourself, you know, that, that this is something that, this is something that I have to do in order to stay, um, to stay sensitive to the things of God concerning my life. Amen. Amen. The next question is, can I use a prayer journal to write my prayers or do I always have to verbally pray them? Can you use a prayer journal? I mean, basically, 
yeah, a lot of people. Yeah, prefer well, you to know, the thing is, the thing is, you know, you can use the word ineffective. See, the Bible lets us know that the spirit is what is really interceding for us because we really don't know what to pray. So the point is, is just to get in the mode of prayer, to get in the atmosphere atmosphere of prayer, and then allow the spirit of your spirit to intercede for you. Amen. Because you don't really know, you're just kind of going through the motion. So this is why when the, the, the disciples were asking Jesus, "How should we pray?" And Jesus began to tell them, don't pray as the heathens pray. They pray as if God can't hear. God hears. He, he knows what you're going through. So, but he says, when you pray, you pray our Father who art in heaven. The first thing you want to say is, God, I recognize that this prayer needs to be directed directly towards the source of where I'm praying. Because, you know, a lot of people pray, but they don't pray to God. You know, people pray to the devil. You don't think so? People who have prayer, they say, Satan, I want you to bless what I'm doing. That's why you see people, they become famous overnight. They pray over their music. They pray over their stuff. How about that? 